It's a solid start to the show. It's like perfect screen grab moment. Hey, this is Kat Stancic with the Revenue Accelerator. And today I have Christine McAllister. I'm actually really excited. And I feel like I say that oftentimes, but I really, really, really mean it this time. So Christine McAllister is passionate an absolutely true statement about helping impact-driven entrepreneurs attract their next level clients by being value-driven podcast guests. She's generated well over six figure for herself and has helped her people do the same for themselves. She is recognized as the best in the world at podcast guesting by seven figure founders like John Lee Dumas, Dana Wilde, and Andrew Croats. Croats, Croats, I said that wrong. I know who he is. Um, A media (laughs) expert for two decades. She's held broadcast the Olympic Games, produced an award-winning documentary for PBS. We're not done. There's more amazing things. And has been featured in Inc. Business Inside, Bustler, The Huffington Post, and over 100 podcasts, as well as hosting her own top-rated show, No One's Ever Asked Me That. Christine, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I need now to add to my bio and can count Kat Stancic a friend. Yay. Yes. Um, So like, I feel like you have one of those stories that you had these different experiences and maybe in the moment didn't necessarily realize how they play together. And like looking back, it makes perfect sense. How often is that something that you experience too with your ideal kind of clients? Oh, great question. <laughs> no one's ever asked me that. And that is tough. <laughs> First question out of the gate, cat. Everyone knows this listening already, but Cats, cats, the boss. Proven once again. Um, I I find that I tend to attract people who are very, like you, very heart centered, very mission driven, and I would say just about all of us are sitting inside our jars, not reading the labels, <laughs> right? Like as high achievers, I mean, I read that and I'm like, wow. But then I, I I live as a person who had those experiences every day. And I'm like listening to all the mind trash in my head about how, you know, I, whatever I would get, I'm not enough or blah, 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 I didn't need to be working harder, you know? So I think it's just, it's such, it's such a cool thing to be able to do in the type of work that you and I do to help people like own their greatness. I mean, yeah, mm. podcast guesting is like the vehicle right now. Yeah. and my mission is like, this business is in honor of my late daughter. Like I am not screwing around here. I am here to elevate consciousness Mm. by helping important voices be heard, not just the loudest ones. Right. Right. Yeah. No, I can so appreciate that because sometimes it really does take someone else to see the amazingness and the, the, I mean, the beauty, um, that we some have often been socialized to dismiss or traumatized to dismiss. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that part of your amazing gifts is really being able to help that person come out with that story in a really stronger, more empowering way, not just for themselves, but in case in point, if you guys didn't notice, like the Christine obviously helps more people get booked on podcasts and monetizing that, What she did, and I don't know, like, it's not a secret secret, but what she did was she's complimenting me as part of it because that is building the relationship between us. And it's a strategy to use as part of, you know, connecting with a person. Cause I see this happen a lot, which is basically treating hosts like one night guests, like one night stands. So (laughs) I just used that analogy earlier today. Yes. So like no one likes, like who likes being used? So really understanding your story, which not only empowers yourself, but really empowers the host to want to create a relationship with you, which just really facilitates all kinds of opportunities. So tell us a little bit more about like how you can make podcasting as a guest be like a monetizing thing without necessarily always focus on, I'm going to close the host. I'm going to close the host. I'm going to close the host because that is a strategy, but I know you do more than just that. Oh my gosh. Yes. I, I am big into possibility thinking. Mm. Uh, I have a sticky note on my desk right now that says parasympathetic nervous system equals collapses time because good God, do I like, could I call overwhelm and stress love languages, right? (laughs) Amen, sister. (laughs) I'm like, breathe and breathe. Mm. And anytime I ask for a message, it's usually something like that. So, so... The thing is, 
this is taking, in my opinion, this is taking what, what I feel it means to be a good value-driven human mm. and applying those values to this medium, right? So how would I, I mean, how do you win friends and influence people? I've often joked that like, if I see someone and I am connected and relate to their energy, I will make them be my friend, right? In a non, non-stalker kind of way. And really, how do you do that? You do that by caring about the other person. You do that in this context by realizing what a privilege it is that you invited me onto your stage and you are paying to edit, promote, host, and essentially endorse me to everybody listening who could care less about me. They love you, right? So immediate transfer of no like, and trust. And the, the thing that most people get wrong is they like, like you said, they walk in as a transactional leechy vampire, you know, and then you're left feeling used, right? And so what are the ways that you can like authentically um, make connection? That's all this is, right? Is making these connections so that when you're impossibility thinking, it's like anybody could hear this at any time, mm. you know, of course, we know the statistics, we can get really attached to those, right? And where are you going to show up in your best brain, with your best ideas, in your true authentic energy? It's going to be from a place of non-attachment. If you go on, like all attached to selling, like you and I were talking about in the pre-chat, yep. it's just like going in desperate to a sales call in your business. People feel it, except at a much bigger scale than a one-on-one sales call. And it lives online as long as the internet does. Right. right? So, so yes, closing the host. Of course, growing your audience. Mm-hmm. Of course, getting clients from the audience. Of course, um, being introduced to other podcasters, right? Being introduced to other people who would be an energetic fit, being invited into rooms that you would have no business being in if you walked off of the street, Right. And, and had it shown up in this way, the sky's the limit. Plus now you have this algorithm proof asset that you can repurpose into a month's worth of content, referring back to the thing every time as a credibility booster can live on a press page, can go in your email sequences, right? No shortage. And then you can continue that relationship to develop it as, as you go on, because this is somebody that you want in your life or you wouldn't have apply it to go on your show if you think this way. So I, I know I have an example of this. There was someone that I met a long time ago um, and I met him and was like, all right, you know, he's, he's, he was up the ladder for me at the time. And, you know, I think I went six months without saying something. And cause I was so kind of starstruck slash intimidated. And then I just basically got the nerve and said, Hey, I'd love to have you as a guest on my podcast. And he agreed. And I was so excited. And I went into it with the strategy of, you know, I, I want to be on his podcast because his podcast had reach. So my focus was on how do I make this an amazing experience, which he had, and then proceeded to invite me on his podcast was on his podcast. Those people in that community started connecting to me. And then basically we went back and forth and I stayed in touch. I sent a gift, all this other stuff, because it was someone who was high caliber that I continued. I wanted to really continue to build a relationship with basically reached out to him and was like, Hey, I know that you spoke at this event and I want to speak at that event, but thousands of people apply to this big name event. And I wanted to get some suggestions from him. And he goes, no problem. Just let me know what you submit. So I submitted one topic. There was an option for three. I submitted one topic, sent it to him. And he said, basically within 48 hours, he said, you're probably going to get some good news soon. So like just, I know you've done that for you, but I'd love to hear like how you and your clients have, you know, what are some examples of beyond just, you know, the direct monetization of, you know, from, because I think a lot of people focus on when it comes to lead generation as host, as podcasting, it's, I'm going to close the host, or I'm going to close, 
you know, someone within a short amount of time frame from the audience, maybe. So yeah. what are those like an example like that of beyond just yeah. the direct path? of monetization that are leverageable as part of your process that you talk about with your clients or that they've actually achieved? Mm, I love that. Um, Super long question. (laughs) Fantastic. I'm here for it. I think I probably ask questions similarly. So I'm like tracking. Um, I, I find that a lot of times when it's an energetic personality fit, like those people become huge uh, cheerleaders for each other. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, not only like maybe biz besties, but, you know, like to your point, reciprocate, have, have you into bring them into like mastermind, right. right. Into, into each other's high level programs, become the go-to referrer, right. Um, because maybe they don't offer, uh, that type of a service, right. Which probably may very likely not. Um, I have seen people get invited into, really exclusive masterminds where it it's invite only it's not Mm -hmm. advertised anywhere and Mm -hmm. it's just like you're a cool dude you may have just started your business just to show it can happen for anyone right and we want you in this room because we like your vibe man right Right. whatever the thing is you know people like people who host podcasts are no different than other people in at least some ways, right? I mean, we're a little weird, but whatever. Um, like we're better. <laughs> we're better weird. Wicked weird. Um, and and so people are looking for the voices that are cutting through all the, the crap and the noise. They're yep. so hungry, especially when you consider, I would say, I'm working to change this, but 90%. Of, of guests that I encounter on in one fashion or another are showing up transactionally right now. Mm. And unless you're doing something where, hey, maybe you only invite people on that you already know ahead of time and you know the whole thing and you can really weed out energetically so you won't have those people on, it's going to happen because that's what everyone's being taught. I so appreciate that in terms of like talking about the energetic aspect of things and, you know, tying in what you, what you've been saying, which is that relationship, because it's not, there's the long-term game and the short-term game. And so I think a lot of people are focused on the short-term, which is so in alignment with bro marketers, right? Which is get that money, get the transaction happening as fast as you can. My philosophy, and I think we align in this is when you focus on the long-term game, the short-term takes care of itself. Mm -hmm. The only instance that doesn't apply apparently is in golf. So Mm -hmm. like really looking at what, you know, what does a lead lead to versus just that lead to client kind of situation. Um, And a lot of what you've been sharing is, is basically skipping the line, right? Like you don't have to just wait your turn and be a good girl and be quiet and you'll get recognized when you get recognized. We're really leveraging visibility as a strategy to get more successful faster. Exactly. I mean, this could be, and I know you help people identify the most aligned strategies, right? For them to accelerate their revenue and, and do it in a way that feels good. If this happens to be the one that you, that you want to go in on, this could be all that you do, right? I mean, I'm getting ready to put an SOP in place where my assistant repurposes one interview Mm -hmm. for like literally for a month, right? And here are all the different ways that we do it. And it required an investment of what, 30 minutes of my time, an hour of my time, whatever, in my zone of genius connecting. And then someone else can take me out of the churn of, of social media creation and warm up that my audience over here, not just getting in front of, right? So it's playing with this idea you don't have to be on six platforms <laughs> everywhere doing stories all the time. Like that's not my reality. I have two, you know, preschool age kids, yeah. right? Um, as much as I love my work, I legitimately can't work all the time, even if I wanted to, right? So what what is the, you know, are you willing to give yourself permission to get good at the one thing that you enjoy doing most for visibility? And play with the idea that in this case, what I hear all the time is it doesn't have to be, yeah, I really like going on podcasts. It's a lot of fun, but I don't see anything from it. So I have to go over here. 
Yeah. So that's a huge red flag for me. Um, when, you know, replace podcasts with any lead generation strategy, when someone's like, Hey, it's not working. And, and it could be that it's not working because either you're not working it or because it's not actually aligned to your strengths and how you Mm -hmm. want to show up. Mm -hmm. And the third piece, which I think a lot of people don't think about, which is it may not be how your ideal clients like to consume and engage with content. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so, so how, how do you identify the best strategy for your clients to leverage when it comes to monetizing guesting, uh, on podcasts? I think again, it's dependent on how their business is set up, right? It's dependent upon them. It's dependent upon their team. How do they most like to welcome and nurture incoming leads, right? right. Is it a Facebook group? It is it their email list. Is it personal outreach? Everyone is so different. And you know, that's why I'm like people who are like, oh, just get a text message number or opt-in because everyone's listening on their phone. I'm like, that does not solve anywhere close to the real problem. It's like anything that's supposedly one size fits all. Like this year it's TikTok, right? Well, I can't with TikTok and I have clients who are love it and are amazing. And I'm just like, that overwhelms me. So no, right. It's also um, a potential self-sabotaging strategy, which I see it, feel it in myself where I'm like, oh, I should be doing that. I should be, I should be. And I'm like, oh, I don't yes. have to. And I'm not necessarily, that's draining to me, but there's this, like, maybe that's the thing that's missing, right? I think there's yep. always that that's the thing that's missing. And so that'll solve my problem yes. instead of really looking at your own process, which is what you're talking about really when it yeah. comes down to it, which is, Hey, what's your positioning? What's your angles? Which, what are your beats? Those are super important when it comes to being a guest on a podcast, but then like, What's your follow-up strategy? What's your keep and touch strategy? How or what ecosystem are you creating for your people so that you're continuing to nurture them because you're adding new people uh-huh. as you're boosting that visibility? And that's where the monetization happens, right? Is in that follow-up yep. versus yep. the one time you're on stage or the one time you're on virtual stage. hundred percent. And it also doesn't have to be perfect, right? Like last week I realized, oh my gosh, we don't have a funnel built out for this thing that all these people are coming in through and it's converting really well. And I'm like supposed to be the queen of this stuff. And I was like, okay, cool. Like that's, that'll just be a thing that we build and it's fine. Right. Like my website still looks like the previous iteration of my business. Cause we've been so busy, like in delivery. Okay. Whatever. Right. The like, key is, is that you're making money despite yes. the fact that things are broken <laughs> because this is, this just hits on perfection paralysis, right? Yes. Or analysis paralysis. And, yes. and I've seen it a million times. Mm-hmm. I actually just wrote this to um, one of my groups, which is, Hey, perfection isn't what your clients are wanting. What they're wanting is for you to show up. Yep. And perfection keeps you hidden. So how often job, is that right? something that like your people oh. might deal with in terms of like, what, like, what are they battling with that? If they could just get over that, they would really see that abundance flow really hitting them harder. Ooh, you know, what I find so fascinating is that even people who are earning, you know, way more than me two seven figure businesses, whatever, multiple seven figure business, like the, there's an often a, a reluctance to share vulnerably. And because, you know, I made a decision at the start of this business that I was going to be open about the reason that I had, which requires vulnerability. Like, of course, there are some things that I don't air my dirty laundry about, but it always surprises me that, um, that, I have an amazing client, perfect example. Her stories around what triggered her PTSD and anxiety from serving in the army are like unfreaking forgettable. And her experiences also inform what she does, which helps, you know, she only works three days a week so that she can create space to heal and she helps her clients do this too. And I'm like, she, she submitted her bio to me. And because I knew her, I was like, where's the stuff about like, what a badass single mom you are and that you're running this business in the wake of what you experienced in, in serving in the army. And she was like, well, it's just not really like comfortable, that comfortable sharing about it yet. And I'm like, well, you and I talked about it over dinner, right? Like it's that kind of thing where I think it again, goes back to being in your jar, like mm. what connects. And when I go back and I study yeah, I've been on all these podcasts because I was figuring this out. But when I study like what worked best, what 
actually, which shows can I directly trace revenue to? Try to reverse engineer the process. Some of them weren't even ranked. Like they would not have been the ones that I would place a client who wants to go on top podcasts on. And some of them, we barely freaking talked about my business. We talked about my story. And those were the ones where people are like, I didn't even know I needed a coach. Take my money. Like what? We just talked about how, how many siblings I had and what it was like growing up with my parents, you know? And I think that just really points to this idea of like people buy from people they want to be in the room with. Yeah. Because Google exists, right? And we just get so wrapped around the axle. Like I need to get my method out there and share my IP and I need a pretty funnel. And it's like, no, you actually don't. You just need to connect with people. This is a leveraged way to do it, right? Yeah. The end. Right. Absolutely. No, I mean, it's, it, I mean, there's three key areas that you've, you've already kind of hit on here in terms of, and it's not one, it's probably a combination, but really looking at, you know, where are the main pillars to look at when you as a person are wanting to, you know, guest essentially one, you know, what's your energy? How are you showing up? Like, you know, energetically present and grounded and all that other stuff in that space of value driven and not just hustle grind and, you know, forced conversions, right. Mm -hmm. The bro stuff. Um, second piece being really in that process and that follow-up and the, the systems that are behind the scenes, And in this third one that you were just hitting on, which is really that, like, you know, there's the energeticness of coming into it. And then there's the energetic connections that you create through your story Mm -hmm. and your beats. Um, And I'm sure like, that's part of what you're doing too, is you're looking at people and saying, Hey, like there's this piece that's missing that would really help build that connection, that story connection relationship. Um, You know, are there any other legs to this chair or stool that are really important to look at outside of those three things when it comes to really being successful as a podcast guest and monetizing that effort? Mm. Well, I, it's something that you called out directly in our pre-chat. So I know that you do it right, but most, again, most people don't, which is not only do you want to get on like the aligned shows, which we talked about, aligned in multiple ways. Mm. Also, you want to offer one, this is very tangible for all you people that are like aligned. That's annoying, but you're probably not if you're listening to cat show. Um, (laughs) um, One clear, free call to action at the end of the episode that creates podcast offer alignment. Mm, mm. Okay that makes some kind of flipping sense between the conversation that you just had, the problems you just solved and where they go from here, right? And to move them, to move the right people off the episode into your world. Most people say something like this. Oh, well, you can get my book on Amazon and I'm on LinkedIn and I'm on TikTok and uh, my website is da 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 And it's like, they're going to do none of those things. None of them. They, even if it's all in the show notes, they need to hear your beautiful voice say what, what they need, what you recommend for them and why and where they can get it. The number one thing. And don't be doing FOMO because FOMO takes this out. It doesn't work. And if you don't move them off the episode, how are you going to get to know each other? How are you going to take this relationship to the next level? So what are the worst CTAs? I have so many opinions um, that like, so like a couple of examples of the worst ones. And um, I mean, let's just set it up. The example of a good one, which if you guys aren't watching the video, it's wink, wink, we know what we're going here. So what is that? Like, tell me the, the do nots and then set me up for the do's. Okay. I personally believe that moving somebody, this is, this is the, first reaction of a lot of people. And I'm always very quick to be like, no, um, let me just offer a free call at the end. Preach <laughs> like literally hashtag not do that. I know, and you know what I'm thinking and my experiences recently. So <laughs> yes, don't do that. Like it doesn't work. Um, even if you're like, I'm the exception, let me tell you something. These people, they love the host. You love cat. 
you I, by this point have either decided if I'm tolerable or you're waiting, skipping to another episode because I'm annoying, which is cool. I'm not for everybody. I'm not meant to be right. But the, the thing is, I'm essentially still a stranger on the internet to you. Like the psychological safety that is required mm-hmm. for somebody to get up their guts and get on the phone with a stranger on the internet is like what I imagine I'm going to feel when I get my first tattoo that I've thought about for seven years, but you know, it's that moment of your first tattoo, right? Mm -hmm. So if I'm getting on the phone with somebody that I previously had this perception of, of being like on a pedestal, because they were on a podcast, a podcast pedestal. Ooh, I like that. Um, Then their fear is very likely going to, to rule, right? Their fight or flight. However, even if it's not logical, even if they love you, However, if you allow them to create, to access something that they want, that doesn't require that getting over that level of fear and that allows them to dip their toe in rather than like go skinny dipping with you, you know, and going into the deep end of a frigid pool. Yes. (laughs) Yes. Wim Hof style. Then, then you're just creating a much wider net. Because the number of people who will take you up on that and in your expertise, right? It allows for that longer customer journey, the entire cycle of a customer um, experience. Yeah, that's one of the worst that I've ever seen versus something. I mean, it also devalues you and says, Hey, I've got all the time in the world. So if you're offering the world, literally, because you're putting it out onto the interwebs, right? Like, Hey, anybody in the world can book a time with me. Then you're not saying your time is valuable. Second, Mm -hmm. like the other thing that I think about in that is like this list, like like you said at the very beginning, it lives in perpetuity, right? Like Mm -hmm. even if I publish it and take it down somewhere, somehow someone has grabbed the screenshot, the audio file or whatever it is, because there's all kinds of systems out there and it lives forever. And so do you want someone coming to you 10 years from now saying, Hey, I saw you on Kat's podcast. You said you had a free time. The link's not working. Then you've created this. Even if you say, Hey, yeah, that was an old podcast. That's not valid anymore. Now you've created this negative experience for someone. And that's not what we want to be putting out into the world. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it just, and it honestly, like, I'm going to kind of say it, it's kind of embarrassing for me for someone to come on and just share that they're going to share like it. It, because of all those things, it puts you at a lower level, even if you're not. And that means that I'm not bringing the best of the best on my show. Mm-hmm. And so now you're doing a disservice to me and it's kind of embarrassing. So oh. I don't know if that's ever been said, but I'm putting it out there. That's a, I love that. That's a great point. So what's an example of, you know, not just the best, but the components that make a really strong CTA and would you be willing to share an example of yours that helps demonstrate all of that? Oh yeah, I love how you tied it together there. <laughs> Thanks for teeing me up. Um, yes, so I have had many and the way that I like to think about this is if you're, if you're thinking about designing a new one, like test whatever you're gonna do somewhere else before you test it on a podcast, right? Because what I say to my clients is like, usually they've had one opt-in or a hundred opt-ins. They've had something and they're like, what should I offer? Like the best one that you have now. Like, I know that we're doing a new thing and it's okay if we want to create one, but it's just like when I used to run ads, right? As a marketer, like A, B test, we want to change one thing at a time, one variable, right? And and usually people have had something that, that has converted. Um, so one thing that I had done, I guess it was maybe a year before last is I had really successfully run this five-day challenge and I had run it two or three times and then I hated it. And I was like, I'm never running a challenge again. This is exhausting. It took five days for my adrenals to be like, F you, you know, whatever. Not to and mention so- all of the effort and the work that went into setting it up so much, right? Tech, I didn't understand. I don't know. Just put me on camera, right? So automations, la, 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 la. So (laughs) after the third time, I was like, that really worked and it really wasn't worth the effort. So I know that this topic would be really, really good for me going on Entrepreneurs on Fire. 
And I also know that that audience is probably not going to listen to me for 30 minutes and then come in for flipping five day course of, of lives. Like I wouldn't do that. So what I did was I was like five steps because it's five days. Right. And I'm really smart like that. And I just took it and I was like, all right, here are the five steps. And I spent about five minutes uh, on each and I made a live video. Mm. And that was it. I just massively condensed it, took out the live coaching, same content. It was great. People loved it. Right. But right now what I have is just a very, very simple PDF checklist. That's it. Because I know that it takes me like 90 minutes to walk through the exact process of what we do. And um, I also know, hey, most podcasts aren't nine, 90 minutes, nor would they want me to teach that for 90 minutes, nor are most people going to listen. So therefore, um, I created a checklist because high achievers, we love our dopamine and, you know, check it off in PDF or print it out and have it in front of you. More than I can cover, really valuable, something I can be proud of, very accessible. The end. Amazing. So tell us what this checklist is and how people can get their hands on it. So thank you again. It is a, it's a podcast guesting checklist Mm. and it's really just meant to like summarize and give you everything that you need to like sit down and start doing this. Right. I, my idea, my template, someone had given me for a podcast pitch. um, It sat in my downloads folder for a year because I was scared, you know, and I was like, who am I to do this? I'll just, I'll just casually personally email Ariana Huffington instead of freaking posting a pot, doing a podcast pitch, right? Because our brains are so funny. And um, once someone invited me on, I realized how fun it was. Then I gave myself permission to go all in. But if I can like simplify the process and just go, you just these little things right. that you can just have right here. You don't have to listen back to this whole thing again. Then hopefully I can create some shifts for people, whether or not I ever meet them. Right. Um, and if that sounds good to you, you can grab it at lifewithpassion.com slash checklist. Awesome. So that's definitely going to be in the show notes for all of you to reference, um, because in case you're driving, we don't want to cause accidents. (laughs) So make sure you check that out. Um, everything and then the additional ways to get in touch with Christine as well. So any final kind of parting words that you want to share with everyone who's listening today? Mm, I feel like the most important thing you can do to be a successful entrepreneur is to grow in your self-trust Mm. And my, my intention here is that this is whether or not you ever podcast guest, this is something that shows you that there are options out there other than what all of the big time influencers and bros and people who say you have to work 80 hours a week are espousing. And I think that your work cat is so important because you can help people figure out what's aligned to them rather than building a cookie cutter business. That's going to burn them out because they're not you and they're not me. Right. So identifying that thing, whether it's guesting or something else is frankly, probably the the best path to a sustainable business that you can have because you're going to want to show up for it. It's going to be fun. It's going to be energizing. Right. And that's the thing to play with because when you have that you add passion and you add energy and all of those things back into your business and you get to keep helping more people and helping yourself oh, brilliant it's awesome and i know that um the checklist can you know take out the word you know podcast guesting and there's pieces in there that are really absolutely applicable even if it's not a strategy that you're using based off of what's in there and the forethought that's put into that, um, that document for everyone to be able to leverage. So make sure you go check it out. Um, Christine, thank you so much for being on today and sharing what you have and really encouraging people to take their voice and get out there in a bigger way and make that impact. And as part of that also receive the abundance that is in alignment with, you know, who they are and their impact in the world. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.